Hello, in this video we're going to go over a problem from IMO 2022. This is a shortlisted problem, which means it was a problem that was proposed to appear in IMO 2022, but it didn't quite make it there. So this is problem A2. Here is the problem. Let k greater than or equal to 2 be an integer. Find the smallest integer n greater than or equal to k plus 1 with the property that there exists a set of n distinct real numbers such that each of its elements can be written as a sum of k other distinct elements of the set. Okay, so the first thing that I did was I started trying this one for small values of k. So k equals 2. I'm going to see if I can create a set with n elements and find out what n would have to be. So let's just say that elements are x1, x2, all the way to xn. I looked at some extreme cases. Let's look at x1. x1 would have to be written as sum of two elements in that set, so xi plus xj. Since x1 is the largest value in that set, this would have to be less than 2x1. And of course, this is greater than xi. So from here, I realized that, well, xj must be positive, and the same reason xi would have to be positive, and of course, x1 would have to be positive as well. Then I looked at the other end of the spectrum, so xn. xn would have to be written as xl plus xk, and xn is the smallest value. This would be less, less than xl, which means xk would have to be negative for the same reason xl would have to be negative, and that means xn would have to be negative as well. So this tells me that I would have to have three distinct elements here and three here, because these are negative, the other ones are positive. So I will have to have at least six numbers in that set. So then I tried constructing six numbers and see if that works. So the simplest thing that I thought about was negative three, negative two, negative one, one, two, three. And in fact, when I checked that, it did work because negative three can be written as negative two minus one, negative two can be written as negative three plus one, and negative one can be written as negative two plus one. So these three do work, and then if you just negate each one of these, you'll get the corresponding sum. So two would be three minus one, and one would be two minus one. So all six of them would work. So the answer for k equals two is n equals six. So k equals two gives us n equals six. Then I thought about, okay, what happens if k is equal to three? So what I did for three was I started with the same example that I had, minus three, minus two, minus one, and one, two, three. And then I thought, okay, what if I just throw in zero here? I would have the same equality, I'll just add zero. So that means negative three is negative two minus one plus zero. So I can do the exact same thing. Negative two is negative three plus one plus zero. Negative one is negative two plus one plus zero. So these three can be written as some of three of the other elements. And of course, these can be obtained by just negating everything. It's only left to write down zero, and that's easy to write. It's negative three plus two plus one. So for k equals three, the answer seems to be seven. However, I'm not quite sure if seven is the smallest. I know there is a, there is a set with seven elements. I'm not sure if that's the smallest number. So. What I did at this point was to try to first construct a set and then see if I can show that that in fact is the smallest value. Okay, so for some k, um, if k is even and if k is odd, it looks like the construction would have to be different. So let's look at the construction that we had. For k equals 2, we got n equals 6. For k equals 3, we got n equals 7. And again, we are not sure if n equals 7 is the smallest one. We, we don't, at, at least there is a construction. So that means for k equals 2, I got 2 plus 4. And for k equals 3, I got 3 plus 4. So can I create, for any k, can I create k plus 4? And in fact, the answer is yes. So the construction is a bit different for even and odd. As you see, for odd, I just threw in a zero in there. And for even, I'll have to do plus minus. So let's say k is 2m. For that, I'm going to create a set of length 2m plus 4. So I will start from plus minus l uh, plus 2, plus minus l plus 1, all the way to plus minus 1. 
So the number of elements here is 2 times L plus 2, which is K plus 4. So there are K plus 4 elements in that set. Now, I will write down every one of them as the sum of K others. So A equals, uh, oh, and by the way, this is, uh, this is 2L. I'm going to write down negative A as negative A minus 1, uh, minus 1. So I'll take two of these. Let's assume for now that A is at least 3, because I want to make sure that these three numbers are in fact distinct. So if A is at least 3, you can write it down in this, in this way, but I need another 2L plus 2. 2L minus 2 terms. So I will add plus minus sum of J and I make sure that J is not 1 or A or A minus 1 and of course J is positive and less than L plus 2. So there are 2 times L plus 2 minus 3 elements in that sum. In this sum we have this many numbers which is 2L minus 2 and we have 2 more here additional 2 here so that gives us 2L summands. If L is at if A is at least 3. Negative 2 can be written as negative 3 plus 1. So these are two terms, and then I'll make sure that the sum is 0. So this is J is not 1, 2, or 3. And of course J is between 0 and L plus 2. So again we have 2L uh, elements in that sum. And negative 1, finally that would be the last one, negative 1 is 2, negative 2 plus 1 plus minus the sum, j, the same sum, j is not 1, 2, or 3, and j is between a, between 0 and l plus 2. So in that way I can write down all of the negative numbers as a sum of two l elements in that set, now I will negate everything. If I negate everything, I will get every positive number also written as the sum of a bunch of terms of that set. Okay, so now that I know that I can create 2L plus 4, now I'm going to look at the odd case. So if K is 2L plus 1, what I'm going to do is the exact same thing. So I'm going to create plus minus L plus 2 all the way to plus minus 1 and then I'm going to throw in 0. I know everything can be written from plus minus L plus 2 all the way to plus minus 1. So the same thing that I have before plus 0. The only thing that is left is 0. So I need to write down 0 as the sum of 2L plus 1 elements in that set. So we can write down 0 as negative 3 plus 2 plus 1. These are three terms and then plus minus the sum of J Again, J is not 1, 2, or 3. And J is between 0 and L plus 2. The number of summands here is 3 plus twice L plus 2 minus 3. So that's 3 plus 2L minus 2, which is 2L plus 1. So that means 0 can also be written as the sum of 2L plus 1 elements of that set. Okay, so now to summarize what we did was this. For every K greater than or equal to 2, there exists a set of size K plus 4 with the given condition. Now, is it possible that K plus 4 can be made smaller? That's like the next step. So I thought about, okay, how about if n is, say, k plus 1? If n is k plus 1, would that work? And again, I looked at the extreme cases. So x1 greater than x2 greater than x k plus 1. I can write then x1 as the sum of some of the elements in this set. So that means x1, there's only one possibility for that. It would be x2 all the way to x k plus 1. And x k plus 1 can also be written as the sum of k elements but that only possibility is x1 through xk. But x1 through xk is more than x2 through xk plus 1, which is x1. So that is a contradiction. So that means n is at least k plus 2. Can n be a k plus 2? So if it is k plus 2, I'll write down the same thing again. 
if I look at x1, x1 should be written as the sum of some of these elements, which means x1 is at most x2, x3, all the way to xk plus 1. And xk plus 1 will have to be sum of some elements here, so it's at least starting from x2 and adding it all the way to xk plus 1. That's the smallest sum that you can get in the sum of the k elements from x1 all the way to xk plus 1. But these two are the same, which means this is greater than or equal to x1, and that is again a contradiction, because xk plus 1 cannot be more than x1. So this tells us that n is at least k plus 3. So unless there is an example for k plus 3, the answer would be k plus 4. So this took me a little bit more but it's still the same thing would work, similar strategy. x1 can be written as a sum of k elements, which means x1 is at most x2 all the way to xk plus 1. And the smallest element, which is xk plus 3, is at least the sum of x3 all the way to xk plus 2. Because again, this guy is the smallest sum that we can obtain. And xk plus 3 must be one of those sums. Now, if you try working this out, we can say this is equal to x2 all the way to xk plus 1. But then I have to subtract x2 from here. And I will have to add xk plus 2 to that. Now, this term is greater than or equal to x1 minus x2 plus xk plus 2. But I know x1 minus x2 is a positive number because x1 was more than x2. So this is greater than xk plus 2. So that tells us xk plus 3 is more than xk plus 2. And that is a contradiction. So what we showed was n equals k plus 1, k plus 2, and k plus 3 do not work. And we did provide an example for n equals k plus 3. So therefore, the answer is n equals k plus 4. And that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next video.